Hello and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast channel. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today we're with another team, not just another team, the winning team of the I-90 Surge. So we, Out of Spec, took 10 vehicles, nine EVs, and one internal combustion engine vehicle from Seattle all the way to Boston on Interstate 90. And well, the winners of this race of the EVs was the Porsche Taycan. And of course here I have David and Sarah from the Porsche Taycan group. We don't have Drew here today, but I do wanna ask you guys before we get started, how are you guys feeling? How is it feeling to be number one? Well, yeah, it feels pretty good. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. After driving 46 hours, it felt so good to just be first. Yeah, I think I'm gonna wait a little bit to do that again. But yeah, so fun. It was a it was a great time. Yeah, what Sarah said, and and it feels nice to have all the videos out so that I can tell anyone, you know, that yeah, we won. Watch the videos. It was fun. It was hard to sit on that fact for two months. Yeah, I can I can imagine I didn't come anywhere near first. So <laughs> let's first go and introduce you guys. David, Sarah, what your experience with EVs are, your passion, and what your first impressions were when Kyle called you and said, hey, I need you to drive 3,000 plus miles across the United States for a YouTube video. Cool. David, I'll start with you. Okay, yeah. So when Kyle first reached out to me about it, I immediately said, yeah, just let me know when and where. He was just saying that it was going to be a trip and that they were probably going to have an i7. And I have two BMW EVs, an i4 and an iX. So he, and he knew that. So he was like, I'm probably going to put you in the i7 since you're familiar with BMWs and stuff. And I was like, okay. Didn't even know what other cars were going to be in it at that point, really. Then as the lineup changed, it was going to be the G80, the Genesis, which I was like, oh, I need to do research about this and started looking into it. And then at the last minute, I found out actually I'm going to be in the Taycan. I was like, oh, okay, so I'm going to win. Yeah. And then I met Drew and Sarah much closer to the event and found out I had a great team too. So it's all lining up for me. Yeah. I'm Sarah, obviously, but, uh, I drive a Tesla. Like I'm just used to putting in the destination and going. So this is my first experience road tripping in a car other than a Tesla. So I was a little nervous at first when I found out I was going in the Porsche, but that was also my first pick out of all of the EVs. I knew that the Model S was going, but I was like, I wanna try something different. I wanna have that experience. I daily drive a Model Y Performance. So I'm, I'm super used to you know Tesla's platform, but this experience kind of opened my eyes to you know, just CCS in general, but Tesla kind of you know, ruined it for me. It made it like simple. But now knowing that I can just road trip in a Porsche and it charges that fast, like, Man, it, it gives me a lot of options and a lot of hope. But yeah, when Kyle told me about this, I knew he was crazy, but I didn't know we were, <laughs> you know, just driving cross country nonstop. I thought we were going to stay in hotels and have dinner together. And then I found out that it was nonstop on the way to Seattle. Yeah. Cause I was, <laughs> like, yeah, I was like texting Ben and I was like, dude, what are we doing? Um, cause I found out he's going on it on the trip and. Yeah, he didn't really know either. So <laughs> I got to Seattle and I was like, oh, it's it's nonstop. And then, yeah, I met the guys and that was our first time meeting. And then we spent the next three days together. So super cool. Yeah. You guys did amazing. Um, let's kind of go over some of the basic stats here. Some amazing stats. 46 hours and 28 minutes. Did you guys think that you would get below that would be more time or is that kind of spot on i i thought 48 hours was doable in the tycon i thought under 48 could possibly be reachable and it would be awesome but i didn't want to count on every charging stop being perfect and you never know about weather and all these things so it was definitely a goal but as we got closer it became apparent like oh yeah we can and i think there's a clip in the third video where we're like, oh yeah, we can do under 48 hours. We're on schedule if everything goes well. And yeah, it was really a nice, nice line to hit. So. Yes, Sarah. Going into it, I didn't know that we could get 46 hours. I was not thinking that. I was thinking maybe 50 because I've heard nightmare stories, right? About whatever, EA and all of that. So I'm like, ah, oh, there's no way we're gonna be that fast. And then yeah, about halfway through, I was like, we're doing really well and we just kept pushing. So 
Yeah. So you guys averaged a time of 15 minutes every single stop. And we'll kind of open this spreadsheet here. Kind of nuts. So I see as, as low as 11 minutes to charge and you peaked at about 22. Did that surprise you guys when you were, were charging and you realize, oh wow, this thing charges pretty quick. I, I, I will say you guys passed us first. We both met in, I'll pull it up here, in Post Falls, Idaho. And you guys kind of married on by us with some traffic. And we both got to the charger within like three minutes of each other. And you guys charged and pulled out so quickly, we still had like another 20 minutes to go. Our team was super confused. So did this surprise you guys or you guys knew right now that this Tycan is going to do super well charging i was familiar with the charging curve so i was expecting it and planning on it if we could get the power that we wanted right that was the big thing it's like are we going to get derated are we going to be able to get all the power that the car wants and going into that first charge stop that's a, a great point to bring up we you know saw you guys on the road as people can see in the video and we really wanted to get there first because we saw on plug share that there were two 350 kilowatt chargers at that stop which have two handles each and it'll split the power. And one of the 350s had one working handle and the other one had two working handles. So we really wanted to get to that one with the one working handle so that nobody could make a split. Cause we didn't know how, where the other cars were gonna come up or if a, you know, a random person from the public was gonna come up. And so we managed to get there first and get that one with the one working handle ensuring we got full power. Yeah, I did not know it was gonna charge that fast. I'm not gonna lie. I am not like, a charging nerd by any means. So I'm just used to like plugging it in and like hanging out a little bit, you know, grabbing a snack. No, it was, it was like plug it in and then go like running into the gas station, using the restroom, grabbing a snack and it was time to go. So I was kind of shocked and I thought that was just maybe the beginning, but it was like that every time we charged. So. Yeah. And that was a, that was a big part of the challenge for us in the, Tycon was that we had so little time at every stop. I don't know if it really comes through in the video, but like, you know, we just did not have time for like a meal. We did not have time for like a real bathroom break. We were all eating really lightly and stuff because we knew like these stops are going to be fast and we can't take time. Yeah. Yeah. I was, what was it? The second charging stop when we went to Walmart? And I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. I have time. I'm going to go grab some stuff. I needed like eye drops. No, I went in there and you're like, it's time to go. <laughs> so I was just you know, grabbing yeah. stuff and like had to check out. It was fast. Yeah, it's, I w didn't expect this as well. I, I knew the Tycan was great, but seeing you guys pull off absolutely blew my mind. For people, for viewers who don't know, the Tycon's charging curve does about 300 kilowatts from about 8% to about 63, 65%, and then it does 200 kilowatts till 80%. So one of the strategies we were going with in the car was to try to arrive at the charging stops between eight and 12%. Because if we arrived lower than 8%, which we did do, because it's the real world a few times, then there would be a little ramp from like, say the high 200s until we got to the 300 plus. Um, so that was part of the strategy. Unlike other teams who were trying to pull in as low as possible, we really wanted to target that eight to 12%. And then another piece of strategy charging stop related while we're on the topic is with, you know, we've all kind of touched on the fact that CCS infrastructure is historically not perfect and not reliable. And certainly we had some problems on this one. So we looked at every charging stop as like pulling a Skittle out of a bag where some of those Skittles might be you know, like terribly flavored, like something, you know, not pleasant instead of yummy fruit flavors. And so we wanted to try to minimize the charging stops to some degree and not like necessarily always pull out as quickly as we could. We wanted to make sure we were in the good part of the charging curve as much as possible, but also skip stops if we could. And that was part of our strategy as well to try to minimize the number of stops at bad charging stops. And we looked at PlugShare and looked at EA app and looked at the Porsche app to try to gauge the status of every charging stop that we chose. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that you pointed that out. So average state of charge on arrival, 7.47%, which kind of right goes in line with what you guys were 
what your strategy was. Do you guys think you could have pushed it any further in the Taikan? Oh, we pushed it. We <laughs> pushed it. There were a couple times that I was nervous. I just, yeah, I saw it dropping down to like 4% of arri at arrival. And it was like, that's scary because zero is zero. So we had to back off a little bit, but I don't know if we could push it even more than that. No, we, we didn't have to drop our speed too much in the whole race. Um, mm -hmm. The one part where we dropped it a lot was in, in Indiana where we hit some weather and we hadn't charged enough to reach the destination we were planning on. And then Drew had to find our Flying J EV Go stop in Eden, Ohio that bailed us out. And other than that time, we pretty much were at the speed cap for the basically the entire drive. Even when we pulled into Schaumburg and ended up pulling in at 1%, we didn't drop speed for that one. We were close enough that we were like, okay, we're, we're just going to go for it. And, and that one ended up okay. okay. Let's kind of go more into some of your strategy. The Porsche route planner, one of the biggest complaints uh, that I, I hear so far from specifically CCS vehicles, uh, non-Tesla vehicles more particularly, that the route planning wasn't the best. And so they ended up relying on finding chargers themselves or a better route planner, just other means. How efficient and well was the Porsche route planner? Did you rely on that mainly or were there other methods that you guys used to find the next charger? We did not use the Porsche route planner. We very much chose our stops ourselves. I think for almost any EV, I don't well, not almost any EV, but most of the EVs in this event, you can put in your destination and the car will get you there. Like it will pick charging stops that you can use. But if you're trying to optimize and you're trying to race like this, you need to pick your charging stops yourself and do your calculations yourself. And that goes for all the cars, even Tesla, which has, you know, the best route planner, you know, the Model 3 team, you can see in the videos, they're picking their own stops. They're purposely, you know, avoiding the 150s that some, you know, the V2s that sometimes Tesla will pick when there are V3s that you could choose. Um, so that's definitely the thing we had to do. We did a lot of research on, all of the charging stops along the route. And we picked our stops strategically based on how far off the freeway they were, what the state of the charging infrastructure at that stop was reported to be, which wasn't always accurate. It was close, but it wasn't perfect. And I knew that we had it in the bag because David spent the entire day before we left on the couch, just going through chargers. He was like crisscross on the couch going through chargers. And I was like, oh, we got it. We're good. Because he put in like literally a full day just mapping out chargers. I wanted to win. And you did. Let's <laughs> go into that. Some of the strategies you guys did beforehand, as well as what your guys' position was for the race, right? Who was the primary driver, route planner? And again, let's start off. What was your pre-driving methods? What were you doing beforehand before driving to make sure that you were most efficient for this race. I we really didn't have a plan. <laughs> I didn't have a plan. We programmed our seats in. We did okay. that. Yep. <laughs> we kind of just got in there and went for it. I knew that I would need some caffeine. So that was like my prep going into it. But yeah, I think we just kind of went off how we felt. If someone was tired, we just switched off. But yeah, I didn't really have a plan. I was just going into it. Yeah, we let... Drew drive us out of Seattle because we figured that would be fun. He's like a really, really good like, you know, track driver and stuff. So we were like, okay, Drew, you get us off to a great start. Sarah did a really heroic drive through like the whole first night, basically. Um, I was up with her. Drew was getting rest for most of it, which was really wise and important. And I kept offering to switch off, but she's like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And she did basically that whole first night. Yeah. And then we, yeah, like Sarah said, we switched off as people were tired and everything. And I think, yeah, we, we, we shared a, probably a pretty even amount of the driving overall. I want to get into your guys' impressions and kind of thoughts of the big three, as we were calling it, the Plaid, the Taycan, and the Lucid Air. We know that the Lucid dropped out, but even before they dropped out, they were actually, I would say, weren't as far ahead of the race as I think many expected them to. Um, even before they lost power, what were you guys thinking about the, the Lucid Air and the Model S Plaid in terms of competition? Well, I'll keep it pretty short because I don't have much to say. I thought the Lucid was going to do better just going into it based on the specs. I, I mean, that was my first time driving a Lucid on this trip, so I didn't know much about the car. 
Now, you know, the Model S, I knew the range was good and I knew there was going to be working chargers. So I was like, that's pretty tough to beat unless we have good chargers. So yeah, I was, I don't know which one I was more worried about. Maybe the Lucid just because of the range, but yeah, I was definitely thinking about it. Yeah, I my I was pretty confident we could beat the Lucid if, you know, things went our way. The big question was how efficient is the Taycan going to be? You know, the Lucid, I think people overvalue the initial range advantage of the Lucid. And I think the main thing was the efficiency of the Lucid because the Taycan, no question, has a better charging curve. So I knew we would charge faster than them. But would their efficiency advantage be enough better to balance that out? I was hoping that we would pass them by Wisconsin and we ended up passing them in Montana. So I thought once we got past them, I thought we were good to go. And when I saw that our efficiency was around three miles per kilowatt hour, and I heard that theirs was around the same at the speeds we were going, I was like, okay, we're golden then from then on. The Model S and the Model 3, I had actually borrowed that plaid for a week in before and driven that exact plaid for a little while. And while the Tesla infrastructure is definitely a thing, I, I had confidence that like I that we could be faster than the plaid, but I was concerned about the Model 3 because Tesla charger is, you know, faster handshake, more reliable, and usually placed better, like closer to the freeway than EAs, which are often at Walmarts or whatever, and like a mile, two miles, three miles off the freeway. So I, I was wondering if the infrastructure was gonna let us down, but it was really good overall. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about some of the infrastructure. So for the most part, you guys had good charging sessions, but I see two no's here. We see a no in Madison, Wisconsin, and then again, another not perfect ses session in Schaumburg, Illinois. Am I pronouncing that right, David? Yep, I think so. Awesome. So yeah, you say both 350s were down and then split with an EV6 for most of the charge, slowing us down. So really, you guys kind of rolled right through. I mean, you already didn't have a lot of charging stops compared to a lot of the other teams, just 15, but you guys had a really good charging session there. So Sarah, you're right. You are a, a Tesla owner. You're used to pretty reliable, secure, simple charging. David, BMW. So you have, I'm sure you have some experience of how uneasy EA and public charging can be. Did it guys surprise you that for the most part, it seemed like the infrastructure on I-90 was good? I was shocked. I thought it was really good. You know, cause like you just hear these stories of people being like, I got to the charger with no battery and I plugged in, it doesn't work. And I don't know if that's just people hating, you know, but no, for us, I was like, wait, this is kind of smooth. They weren't close to the highway. I will say that uh, yeah. we had to drive like into town. So that kind of sucked, but yeah, no, I was super impressed. Yeah, I, I was too. I've done a lot of CCS road tripping. I put 27,000 miles on my I-4 in the first year that I had it, you know, doing road trips across the country and stuff. And I had just done a cross country road trip in our IX in June of this year. And I didn't do I-90, I did mostly I-80, but you know, there were problems on even on that trip. And so I was pleasantly surprised at how few problems we had. That one in Madison was like, the only really like infrastructure problem where both the 350s were down. And, you know, I talked about that in the, in the video, but basically the EA app and the Porsche app both said one of the 350s was working, but neither of them was working. So that's what bit us there. In Schaumburg, it wasn't an infrastructure problem. It was just that, you know, a lot of the 350s nowadays are balanced chargers and there's an EV6 on the other 350. And so we had to share with them until they unplugged. And we did not go bother them or anything. We were polite guests of the infrastructure and just let them do their thing and put up with the slower charging until they left. So. Okay. What advice would you guys give to people who may be road tripping a Taycan? Do your research on your stops to make sure that you can get full power. Because if you can get full power, then it'll be quick. Prepare yourself that the car will be ready before you are at pretty much every stop. Yeah, I agree with that. I've never charged a car that felt like getting gas. Like it was just so fast. You plug it in and it's basically time to go. Like we would get the trash out of the car and use the restroom and we're like on the road again. Yeah, Tell me you saw, 
and the, sorry, just real quick as an example, our last stop, we, Drew ended up running into the bathroom and he wasn't long or anything. He was quick, but that was enough time so that we had enough power to get to, to not stop again. Like it, it's crazy how quickly that car onboards power. Tell me if you guys share some of the sentiment. Do you guys think that this is realistic of actual driving across the, the country? Do you guys think you'd take a lot slower or would you be on the same pretty fast paced, fast pace? Yeah, I feel like it would be about the same. I mean, realistically, you know, people are like, well, I can go 500 miles. But normally people have to use the restroom before then. So, you know, three and a half hours, four hours of driving, it's kind of nice to stop and get out of the car. And yeah, charging for 10 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever. I felt like that's like you could be really happy doing that. And if you want more range than that, it's like... Maybe you should drink water more. Yeah, I think for me, I've, I'll do a 22 hour stint without stopping in a hotel to, to sleep, you know, by myself or whatever. So I'm, I'm not a normal person with road trips, but I think for the average person, the Taycan is like way more fast than, than the, they would need a car to be. I think you, you could be fine with a slower car potentially, but if you have the means to get yourself a Taycan and used ones can be had for way off of full price. But if you have the means to get a Taycan and you want it road trip fast, that's going to, the car is not going to be holding you up ever. And if you do stop for the night in a hotel and you find one that has an EV charger, which nowadays is getting easier and easier, then it's just going to make it even faster because that's going to cut out at least one, if not two stops um, at chargers to charge on a level two overnight. So Perfect. Okay. Let's see. I'm thinking of any other questions before I move on to a different subject, but yeah. Do you guys have anything else to add on terms of your strategy and your enthusiasm towards going into the race? I don't think so. No, it was just one of the great things was all three of us were in total alignment. And I don't know if Kyle knew this would be the case. He's a genius. If he did arrange this on purpose, we were all like, yes, let's win. Let's go. Let's sacrifice our you know, own well-being in order to make sure that we maximize the car and get there. And that was great. And we had so much fun together. I think one mistake we might have made is that my phone was the one we were using for charger planning. And it was also the one we were using for filming. And that if we had separated those duties out, we could have gotten more footage of us planning our charging stops. But because I was doing it on my phone, I wasn't obviously recording at the same time. So that's why yeah. usually if you saw us talking about our next stop, we had already picked it and entered it into the car. So and I can't remember if I asked this already. Would you guys make any change to your strategy? I mean, it seems going in, you guys kind of followed what the, you guys knew what the Taycan was capable of. Um, Sarah, again, you're a bit more surprised, but you guys kind of followed along with the, the road the Taycan was taking you. Would you still follow that kind of same strategy or would there be more math to what you guys did? I mean, I'm happy, but David probably wants to shave off like two yeah, minutes. Yeah, I think I think there's probably like a half hour total we left on the table to be in all honesty. Like we, it was a pretty near perfect run like as, as perfect as we could hope in the real world i think if we rent and redid it you know once the weather's nice again obviously if we redid it right now it'd be slower given the weather but you know once the weather's nice again if we went and redid it i don't know that we would be any faster because of the realities of traffic of chargers of everything so you know other than under charging in schaumburg or not not originally planning on stopping at eden if we had just originally planned to stop at eden ohio where we ended up stopping we would have never slowed down in that section in Indiana. And that would have saved some time and like a few other things here and there, we could have saved some time, but not more than a half hour. It was a pretty near perfect run. I think given the limitations of the speed limits. Is there anything you guys would change about the Taycan to make it a little bit better? Any cons? It sounds so great. Like, yeah, I mean, it is a great car, but it's just not super comfortable. It's <laughs> yeah. tight yeah. for three people. For, for that long. The back seat's very tight. Drew and I are, well, I'm I'm about six foot and Drew's a bit taller than me. And the back seat was an experience. The front seats were fine. They weren't spacious, but they were fine. Like, they could be more comfortable, but they were fine. The infotainment is the main thing that I think it needs, needs some updating. 
I've heard the Macans is much better than new Macan EV. And if the Taycan could get that update to be more responsive and stuff, that's the main thing I think for the Taycan needs. It's a gorgeous car. It drives really well. It's just super fun to be in. So pretty minor complaint. Okay. If we were to do this tomorrow, if Kyle said, hey guys, we're doing the I-90 surge, this time Seattle, Boston to Seattle, what car would you guys pick instead of the Taycan? Can't pick the Taycan, what other EV from that race would you pick? David, what would you choose? If I can't pick the Taycan, I mean, I want to say Model 3 because I, I want to have a chance at winning. But if I have to pick another CCS car, probably Ionic 6, the, probably the best chance. Yeah, I could see that. I I would go with the Model 3. It's comfortable. It's simple. I know it really well. But if I had to choose another car, probably the EQS. It's not the best looking, but it's comfortable. <laughs> and efficient. And efficient. Yeah. That it is. Yeah, as much as I love my BMWs as daily drivers and even on casual road trips, they're they're really pleasant. They don't charge very well. And as Kyle illustrated, they get even worse on a trip like this. And I even hit that charging degradation counter on my own road trip to Arkansas and back to Michigan just this past week. So uh, I would not pick the I-7 or anything like that for a competition, but I'm just happy to do road trips. I just love them in EVs. Sweet. Okay. Awesome. I think I hit all of our main bases here. I do want to ask, was there any part of that race that kept you guys going other than the competitive nature of you guys to win? Any methods that you guys use to to stay awake, to stay on track? You guys have a good chemistry, all three of you. I think that was a lot of it, honestly. We just, we really got along. Like Drew would wake up and David and I are in the front seat just goofing off. I don't even know what we were talking about, but you know, when you're driving for that long and you're stuck in a car together, we were just being goofy. And, you know, by the end of it, I felt like, I don't know, I felt like we were family, which is really cool over, you know, the course of 46 hours. It's like, we got really close and yeah, I couldn't ask for a better team. So. I agree a thousand percent. Everybody in this event seemed really nice and was fun, but if, if I had my choice of a team, I would definitely pick the same team and sad Drew can't be here for this call, but yeah, absolutely feel like Sarah and Drew are family after this. I think that's, that's it. Typically go like a little longer, close to like 45 minutes, but there typically be a third person to kind of draw that on. Well, we're yeah. quick in the race. We're quick in our interview too. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> we're just overall efficient, you know? Yeah. What, what can efficient. I say? Yeah. Super efficient. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you guys I would change got... the wheels though. Oh God. Okay. Those are ugly. <laughs> I heard it a few times that they were pretty hideous hideous wheels those are aero wheels right those were the most efficient for it yep chosen for function not for form for sure yeah i need to photoshop those but it's fine you guys arrived at 12 48 you guys were hours ahead of everyone else pulling in what was going through your heads like okay we're we're here everyone's so far behind us i mean i'm sure at that point you knew hours before that you were hours ahead of everyone else, but besides winning and knowing that you're winners, what else was going through your, your head? I can't wait to take a shower. Yep. Yep. I was, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Yeah. That getting to the hotel was just like a huge relief, like throwing your bags down and just being stable for one second, you know, and eating real food. Yes. That was huge. Cause we didn't, we were eating like beef jerky and chips you know, whatever we could just grab and check out with. So yeah, eating real food. I think I had a steak that night, steak and potatoes. And it was your birthday. Yeah. And it was, I guess that's the other thing about once you reach, I was like, yay, I'm, happy birthday to me. And so that, <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah. And thanks also to the one, the one real food we had on the trip was Drew's parents brought us burgers and fries, which oh, wow. they dropped them off in Schaumburg um, to us. So that was one time that we got actual food. Like we could see the other teams enjoying in the videos. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing that, I was like, oh, wow, that seems nice. <laughs> we didn't get <laughs> we that. I was like eating a burger. Yeah. A lot of, yeah. <laughs> y'all had time, I guess. We just were eating, you know, gas station food for 
most of it. But yeah, that burger yeah. was amazing. I had like in the video, <laughs> you're like, we're eating burgers, the first real food. And I didn't say anything. I'm just nodding and like eating a burger. Yeah. Beautiful moment. Yep. Cheers. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for, for joining me. If you viewers, listeners have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'm going to bother you both and David and Sarah to help answer some of these questions. Thank you guys for taking the time out of your day. It's been a couple months, you know, refreshing your memory, kind of getting back up to date and reminding, reminding yourselves that you're, you're winners. You know, I feel it every day I wake up and I'm just like, I'm a winner. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely yeah same after that trip i was never the same yeah i don't have anything to prove for the rest of my life now right yeah big ego boost i won the i know oh, yeah. sir i need you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so you know i can tell my grandkids one day <laughs> yeah. awesome all right well thank you guys so much for watching again sarah david thank you so much for joining me this is a i90 surge recap interview if you guys, again, have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. But yeah, awesome. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Out of Spec Podcast, and we'll see you guys in the next one.